So today I'm going to, to talk to you about organizing your JavaScript files. I came to this idea while working on a project uh, in the company I work for. We were working on a big project and needed a better way to organize our JavaScript files. So we came up with this idea that I'm going to show you right here. And when I say we, I actually mean a colleague from work. He's much better developer than I am, at least JavaScript developer, but he doesn't make a blog and he also doesn't uh, record YouTube videos. So he can't show you that, but I will. And I hope you will find this knowledge useful. So as you know, uh, Vue and React and Angular come with the system of organizing out of the box. But if you are working on a project like I am, where we are not using Vue, we are not using React, we are just using uh, vanilla JavaScript ES6 code. We just needed a better way to organize that. And I'm just going to show you how we did it in this video. And maybe you will find that knowledge useful. Okay, so this is my project right now. And if you take a look what's in it, it just contains one index.html file. And that's it. And it's called organizing JS. If we take a look at that page right here, you can see that we are just having this title. Okay. So first of all, we need to install Webpack because of course we are going to be needing Webpack. So I'm just going to do npm in it to initialize our npm. And then I'm just going to install Webpack. Webpack Li and also Webpack. So Li is CLI tool for Webpack. Since this video is not about Webpack, uh, you can check out in the right corner, there will be a card to the video where I discuss Webpack in a bit more length. But for now, what we are going to be do, uh, doing uh, is I'm just going to go search for Webpack, find it and just going to copy this code right here. So this is going to be our configuration. I'm just going to copy this and create a new file and it's going to be called webpack config.js. So this is going to be our configuration file. And I'm just going to paste in uh, the code from the site. And I'm just going to add mode right here, which is going to be development. Because if we don't do that, then uh, the uh, webpack is going to give us some warnings. Uh, everything will actually work, but it will just put out warnings that we are in production mode and not in the development mode. And I'm just going to change this entry from SRC to JS and it's going to call a file called index.js and it's going to output uh, that into the disk directory uh, to the file called bundle.js. So I'm just going to go right here and call that script. So this is the way we are going to be calling our script. Okay, so everything looks fine as of now. We still don't have any JavaScript files. So to create them, I'm just going to create a new directory and a file called JS. And in that file, I'm going to have index.js file. And also, uh, I'm just going to add few more files. So I'm just going to create a directory called components. And in that uh, directory, I'm going to have two files. One is going to be hello world, of course, that JS. And the other file is going to be called show box dot js. Okay, so if we take a look at our tree right now, you can see that uh, I have node modules right here, uh, which I'm just going to exclude. Okay, they are excluded. Uh, <clears throat> I have index.html, package.json, webpack config file, and I have this js folder with index.js and uh, two components in it which as I see right now, I screwed up. So I'm just going to do this. Okay. And delete these components right here. 
So we are going to have hello world and showbox.js. So we have these two files in our JS components file and we have this index.js file. So the main thing that we are going to be doing is this index.js file. Of course, we are going to write some code in hello world and uh, showbox, but these are just our components. In index.js file, we are organizing our components. And now since we are using Webpack, we are of course going to import some things from those components. So I'm just going to go to hello world.js and we are using classes for this. So every component is going to start like this export default class and it's going to be called hello. So this is the class of hello and now we have a constructor. And in that constructor I'm just going to say hello world. Okay, so this is our first file and we can just copy and paste this in. And this one is going to be called showbox. And I'm just going to say showbox. Okay, so this is our setup. Now, the next thing you need to do, you need to import those files into index.js. So I'm just going to import them. Let me make this bigger. Okay, import hello from components. Okay, and now I'm going to import components uh, showbox. Okay, now we have those two components imported. What we are going to do now, so this is the meat of uh, our organizing our files, we are going to actually create an array called components is equal to an array. And in that array, we are going to have some objects and that those objects is go are going to be class. So the class that we are calling, in this case, is going to be hello. And the next thing, so now we are not using uh, a Vue.js or uh, uh, Angular or something like that. So our JavaScript is dependent on our DOM and elements in that DOM. So we want to call this class if something on the page exists. So in our case, it's going to be selector called hello. So we are going to have a div called uh, with the class of hello. So when this piece of code finds that div, then it's going to run this class right here, hello class. Okay. And the next thing we want to do the same thing for showbox. So it's going to be showbox. And for that, we are going to use class JS show box. Okay, so if there is a class of JS show box on the page, then this class is going to be run. Okay, so this is how we define our components. Now we actually have to run them in some way. So what we're going to do is we're going to say components dot for each for each component. And now right here, we're going to go through this array through each component. And we are going to say if document query selector has component selector. So if uh, this selector right here exists on the page. So if it isn't null, then you should do something. And what this piece of code is going to be doing, we're just going to say, then get me all of the selectors because you can have multiple JS show boxes on the page, for example. So you're just going to say document query selector all component selector. So 
and then we are going to go through them for each and then we are going to say element actually I'm just going to start writing this in a new line element and then we new up our class so new component class that class is equal to uh, we are actually passing element and component options uh, we are not going to be using those component options but if you want to pass some options to your class you can you would do something like options and then something right here you would have I don't know order to for example or something like that whatever other options you need for your component you can pass them right here if you want so that's uh, that's why we are passing uh, this thing right here and actually I think uh, this should be it I will just save this and now we are going to try to run webpack and see what happens on our page so before we run webpack this should be from not form or whatever so I'm just going to save this we are going to go to uh, our terminal and then we are just going to run node modules dot bin slash webpack to compile our files and see if everything went okay okay so now our files are compiled if we check this folder you can see bundle.js right here and you can see all of this weird uh, webpack code okay now uh, let's uh, just test this out on our page so if I go right here I refresh this page nothing happens as you can see we don't get anything in our console because we don't have a uh, element on our page that is going to run any of our classes so if I go to my index.js index.html file and create a div with a class of hello for example so now sh we should be getting hello world in our console because right here we said that when you find hello when you find that hello element on the page then you run this class okay let's try it out if i refresh the page as you can see i get hello world same thing would happen if i do that js show box right so if I refresh this now I get hello world and I get show box okay so let's just make a better example of this so first of all I'm just going to do something like that box and right here I'm going to add a style or with a width of 100 pixels Hi. come on 100 pixels and background of black so if I refresh the page I get this right here uh, but I'm also going to create a class called dnone or display none okay and I'm going to put that class right here so now our box should not be visible on the page right nothing so I'm just going to create a button right here called actually with a class of JS show box okay now we have a button of course that button doesn't do anything and it doesn't have a label right so what we want to do right now is when somebody clicks, clicks show box the box is going to be shown on the page so uh, that is going to be done by this component right here because it depends on the JS show box element and uh, how what happened 
okay and how you use this uh, is like this so you have a constructor at least this is the way I use it you have a constructor and in that constructor you would just define uh, your uh, event listeners and your variables and your global variables that you are going to be using throughout your class so if you want to create a global variable you would just do this and the variable name equals something right okay uh, but we are not going to be needing any variables because we can pass element to our constructor and that element is actually this right here this JS show box so if I do element dot log so I want to cause the log that element refresh the page oh <laughs> I forgot um, we built our uh, JS, but we didn't. Uh, we, we are not watching right, right now. So whatever I write in my JavaScript, it's not going to be reflected on the page. So to do that, we are just going to say node modules bin webpack watch. Okay, so now it's watching our files. And uh, let's try to refresh it now. Okay, so as you can see, so this is our element it reference this element references this uh, button okay so if we, ha if we have that button on the page then we can say something like element uh, add event listener that is going to be uh, on click and when that click happens then you need to do something and what we are going to be doing so you're going to have in the constructor just your event listeners but what that ev event listener does once the event has happened you can define right here so you can create your methods so somewhere right here or actually your functions so you're going to say this show box right so this is going to be the name of our function, which we are going to be defining right here. Show box. And uh, right here, we are going to have code for showing that box. But before we do that, I am actually going to define a global variable, or you don't even need to define a global, you can define a normal vari variable. So const box is equal to document query selector dot box so we are finding the box element so once we find it we can pass it to this method box and what we want to do right here is just say box or element or whatever so i'm just going to call it box box uh, class list that toggle and we are going to be toggling the none class and that should be it save this uh, our webpack did this thing refresh the page and now if I click this I get the box and if I click it again the box is gone okay so that's it so this is the way uh, you would organize your files and I also show you the way you would uh, structure your individual components. So in the constructor you add event listeners and your global or normal variables and then you would just have methods uh, that are called by those event listeners. Okay, so this has been it for this video. I hope you find it useful. I hope you can use this on your future projects. If you want to ask me questions, of course, you can use social media for that. Everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. Uh, and uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, if you like the channel, maybe consider su subscribing to it. And if you really want to help out the channel, you can use the Patreon page for that and send some money my way. And to all my present patrons, thank you very much. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.